Well, grace and peace and thank you for joining us here at the Friendship Baptist Church of Delaware. We hope and pray that your day has been great and your week has been wonderful. As we say all the time, for this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. The Bible says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his holy name together. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his trouble. Tonight, we give honor and deference to our Deacon Warren Henderson and to our Deacon Owens and to our Minister Cheryl and to our mothers and to all of the great people that make up the great church called Friendship. We honor you all tonight. Listen, tonight, we want to uh, celebrate and thank God for such a phenomenal 90th church anniversary. Surely the Lord has met us, had met us, and we want to send a special thank you um, to our minister, Cheryl, who preached on the first Sunday, and to our uh, elder, C. Andre, who preached for us on the second Sunday. On the third Sunday, our Bishop Oliver uh, came, uh, Vincent Oliver came and preached a powerful word and then on Thursday night was our midweek uh, worship, and our minister Maurice uh, preached a powerful message. And then on this past Sunday, our minister Curtis Henderson came and demonstrated the power of God through that powerful message. Listen, every singer, every visitor, every person that was uh, came and worshipped with us, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, even for you that have sold your seed. Uh, we want to say thank you. Um, we we had a phenomenal time. It's it's just uh, if you have not had the opportunity, you can go back and watch the replay and enjoy the worship experience with us that we experienced on this 90th church anniversary, and that we had a phenomenal time. And we want to say thank you all to listen tonight. We want to pray for, we're praying for our sick and shut in. We're praying for our mothers. We're praying um, for our deacon, our deaconess, uh, uh, every person. We're praying for you tonight that the Lord will heal, that the Lord will deliver, that the Lord will replenish, uh, that the Lord will do as only he can do. And tonight we're praying a special prayer for uh, the state of Florida and the city of Tampa, uh, we understand that they are going through a, uh, a storm at this pre present moment and that we're praying that the Lord will intervene and show forth his hand and show favor. And tonight, listen, we thank God. We're praying tonight. Father, we thank you for this time of word, for this time of impartation, for this time that you have called us together to Bless your name tonight. Father, I pray tonight that someone will be saved, someone will be healed, someone will be delivered. Someone tonight will be set free. Father, I pray tonight that you would intervene right in the city of Tampa today. Uh, Father, I pray that you would touch and heal, intervene for them right now. That, Father, I pray that you can only do as only you can do. Now, Father, I pray that you would touch the city of Wilmington. Father, I pray that you would touch Philadelphia. Father, I pray that you would touch our world, our mayor, our um, uh, uh, president, all of those that sit in the seat. That we sit in this uh, at a time gone, that we seem as though that the world is going crazy. But you said tonight that the fetchal fervor prayers of the righteous develop much. And tonight, Father, we're calling on you that you can only do as only you can do. That you said if there was a two or three touching and in, in agreeing, there you will be with us tonight. And Father, we're touching and agreeing. I'm praying tonight for my sister. I'm praying for my brother tonight. Those that are watching, those that are going to watch the replay, Father, that I pray tonight that you would heal them, that you would deliver them, set them free. Whatever might be ailing them, whatever might be trying to set them back, that I, Father, I pray that they give up might be around them, but give up is not in them. Uh, Father, I pray tonight and we give your name glory and we give your name honor and praise. It's in Jesus' name we say amen. Listen, we love you tonight and we bless the Lord for you uh, joining us tonight. Let's go right to the word of the Lord. Out of the gospel, or rather out of 1 Peter chapter 4, 
1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. 1 Peter 12 and uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. It says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes up to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Verse 13 says, but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering that ye may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Um, but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings that ye may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is is revealed. Tonight, we want to talk and deal with this lesson tonight from this thought. It's only a test. It's only a test. If we were to be honest tonight, and as the children say, keep it 100, there are times in our lives, there are times in our lives um, that does not seem, or rather doesn't seem like God loves us. It seems like God does not care, does not seem like God is answering our prayer uh, because it seems like the more that you pray, it seems like the more that you're fasting, the more that you're, you're saying, God, I'm I'm turning it over to you. It seems like before the situation gets better, it seems like it's getting worse. As we look around the world and we see how people are just cold hearted, not caring about anything but themselves. But brothers and sisters tonight, that we must understand that a test is only to see how well you've progressed in your learning in environment. But if you haven't learned a lesson or learned the lesson, you're going to have to repeat the process. Let me say that again, that a test is only to see how well you've progressed in your learning environment. But uh, if you have not learned anything or learned the lesson, you're going to repeat the process. Can I stop there tonight? And we must understand here is that, brothers and sisters, that as I said, that a test is only to see how well you progress in your learning environment. That you must understand that when we went to school, that, that it was the job of the teacher to see see how well you were um, it, it, you were able to comprehend what was being taught and if you did not understand what was being taught sometimes uh, another there was some that needed a little bit more help to catch what was going on but there is not the night I want to talk to you and those of you tonight think that God is saying tonight he wants to see how well you have learned or progress in the in your learning environment that God says I'm not going to take you out of it, but I'm going to give you strength to endure what you're going through, yeah, because it seems like we praying, God, God, bring me out of this, God, you know, take me out of this, no, God said, no, my grace is sufficient for thee. In other words, he's saying, I want to see how well you're going to handle what you're going through in this season, because in the last season, you fell. Let's be honest and tell the truth and shame the devil, yeah. Yes, we have not dotted every I and crossed every T, but the truth of the matter is God has not taken his hand off of us. And the truth of the matter is, yes, uh, we fell one time, we fell twice. Uh, that's why we cannot say he's the God of a second chance, because the reality of it is he's a God of chance because he's given us more than one, two, three. But whatever, how many chances you might think that you want tonight, you you ought to thank God that you have not, you that you did not, he did not give you over to the hand of your enemy. That it says the test 
is only to see how well you've progressed in your learning environment. But if you have not learned anything, uh, brothers and sisters, you're going to have to repeat the process. I don't know about you, but there is not the season for us to be wasting time going in circles. It's not the time for us to be wandering in the wilderness. It's not the time for us to be going around. No, but the reality of it is, it's for us to understand that this, that God is trying to get something out of us so that we can know how to handle where and what we're going through right now. Don't laugh at me, brothers and sisters, but tonight I remember when I was, uh, I got stopped by the police and I knew uh, that I've been driving a long time uh, around. I was driving around a long time without a license, but after being stopped by the cop, I decided to go get legal. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's another subject for another person. Uh, the, uh, that there are some of us that are walking around, we're driving, but we're driving illegal, yeah. Uh, but 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 here it is that, that, that I had to look and I said, no, you know what, I'm going to take my permit test. And for some reason, I went the first time I mean, I didn't pass. I went back and back until I came to the eighth time because I was not focused on what I was trying to accomplish because I thought that I knew it already because I've been driving so long, but not knowing they had changed the book. They had changed some of the questions that I thought that I knew it wasn't in there. And, and brothers and sisters tonight, I want to tell you something tonight. In order to pass your own individual test, you have to make sure that you pay attention to what the teacher is trying to show you. Uh, don't you ever think that you are smart smarter than the teacher. Don't you ever think that you're smarter than God. You and I cannot avoid, or rather avoid a test. Nobody can take it for you. I don't care how well you feel like y'all have the same facial expression. You might look like your mama. You might look like your dad. But the reality of it is that the test has your name on it. I don't care. Uh, you can't know, and can't nobody take it for you. That in this walk with Christ, it is one thing to say you are, but it's something else when you have the evidence, evidence that you have been through the fire and the pit built, but built, uh, but you are built, but you're built. Uh, you have the power of the Holy Ghost. Let me say that again, that in this walk with Christ, it's one thing to say that you, that you are, but it's something else to say that there's something else when you have the evidence that you have been through the fire, through the pit, but you have the power. Tonight, Jesus knew it was necessary for him to go through his situations because someone was waiting for his yes to the Father to let them know God was on their side. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, I want to tell you that somebody is waiting for your yes uh, so they can understand and know that if God has done it for you, he can do it for them. Here it is that when we look here in verse number 12, it says, Beloved, do not be surprised. In other words, don't be caught off guard at the fiery trials when it comes upon you to test you as though something strange was happening. He says nothing is strange happening, that this is what it's supposed to be. You're suppo there's a, there is a time, there is a place, there is a, uh, there is a time, there is a place for things to happen in your life. No, we don't know when they're going to happen, but if we must, but it behooves us that we be ready when it comes or when it happens. It said, do not be surprised. Don't be caught off guard at the fiery trials when it comes upon you to test you that yes, as though something strange 
was happening to you. Uh, no, nothing is happening to you. That this is just a, a pivotal moment in your walk that you will have to go through something to so that God will know who he can test or who he know he can depend on. But it says, but rather rejoice in so far as you share Christ's suffering that you may also rejoice. In other words, don't be sad. Don't be crying. Don't be sharing no tears, but rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. That brothers and sisters, it is not yet come to us what we shall be, but when we, it, when, when the timing of it shall come, we shall know, he shall know us, or we shall be known in the timing of what he has. That you must understand that brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it is not for us to know the season nor the time, but it's for us to understand that God says to us to Tonight. He says, beloved, but be not surprised. Don't let it catch you off guard at the fiery trials when it comes upon you to test you. That it says, as though something strange was happening. No, it ain't nothing strange. This is it was is a pivotal moment in our lives. But it says. Rejoice in so far as your share Christ's suffering. This is what you got to do tonight. It says that you rejoice and be glad. That I want to tell you something tonight. That don't you ever allow yourself the enemy of your soul to think that this is, this is, this is what is all going to be. No, this is only a test. It's only a moment to see what's going to happen. What have you learned from your last experience? What have you learned from your last encounter? What have you taken in? What was your, what was the pivotal moment? What has helped you through the timing of where you are right now? The problem that we have is that we want, we don't have a problem with going through life, but we don't want to go through the trouble. We don't go to, we don't want to go through the trial. We don't want to go through ups and downs. We don't want to have no ups. We don't want to have no hiccups, but we want everything to be peachy and cream. No, but the reality of it is there were some things in our walk that we going to have to learn how to walk it out. Mama's not going to be there. Daddy's not going to be there. Your brother, your sister, your pastor, your, 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 the deacon and trustee, nobody's going to be there, but it's going to be you and God. And you gonna have to say, God, in you I put my trust. That if if I can put my trust in my job, if I can put my trust in the chair I'm sitting, in, if I can put the trust in the bank that I put my deposit, my money in God, I have no other choice but to trust the God that you are. I remember this very vaguely. That I remember that I was sitting. In school. And every so often, not only did they give us a pop quiz, but every so often we had to do a fire drill. And they would come over the loudspeaker and tell us, it's only a test. It was only because every once in a while they got to make sure. You're sharpened to understand in the case of an emergency, you know what to do. And God is saying every now and again, I have to test your ability to see if you have retained what I've given you. Have you retained the, the, the state of emergency? Have you retained that when you get in trouble, yeah, can you call on the name of the Lord? When you get in trouble, the first thing you don't do is you call your family, your friend. No, the first thing you do when you get in trouble, you call on God. That he says tonight that it's only a test. 
I want to tell you tonight, don't be surprised. Don't let it catch you off guard. That as Christ had to suffer, you and I have to suffer. We cannot avoid that. We can change our doctor's appointment. We can change our hair appointment. We can change our nail appointment. We can change this and change that. But one thing you cannot change. And one you cannot change when life is going to happen. Everything will be good right now, my boy. Tomorrow something be going, something else could happen. What do you do with a test? Do you fold? Do you give up? No, brothers and sisters, ladies, I, I want to tell you that don't you dare give up. Don't you dare give in. Don't you dare allow the enemy of your soul to tell you you're going to be a failure. This is all it's going to ever be. No. So what you failed in the last season, this is the season now that you shall be above and not beneath. That you shall be the head and not the tail. That God has great things in store for you. I don't care what transpired yesterday. Behold, I shall do a new thing. Today is a new day. That it's only a test. That I said earlier, and I want to give it to you now, that in order to pass your own individual test, you have to pay attention to what the teacher is showing you. That God is a strategic God. He will give you the answer before he gives you the question. If you don't believe it, read the Bible. That he said our light afflictions are only for a moment. Wait a minute. I'm not even in, at this particular moment, I'm not even in I'm not going through anything. But remember, it's only for a moment. Number two, never think that you're smarter than the teacher. You know, we got intelligent people. I, I have a degree in this. I have a degree in that. And can't nobody tell me anything. I, I know I know the mind of God. He speaks to me. Now, the reality of it is, you don't want nobody to tell you anything. You're never too old. To, you're never too old to learn. Never too old to be taught. Number three, you cannot avoid the test. Nobody can take it for you. This test has your name on it. And you have to walk through your test with integrity, with pose. And gratefulness. That here it is that Jesus, as I said, Jesus had already knew it was necessary that he had to go through this. That's why he said tonight, don't be surprised. Things are going to happen. Things are going to come up in your life. But you can't allow them to overshadow your ability to move forward in God. Father, I thank you tonight for your word. I thank you for your people tonight. I thank you for this time that you have allowed us to share in the word. Now, Father, I pray tonight that someone tonight will be edified. That someone will be renewed. Someone will be, someone tonight will be strengthened to carry out the remainder of this season, this year, 2022. 
that Father, nobody but you brought us thus far. And we give your name glory tonight. We thank you because you didn't have to, but you did. And for that, we're grateful and we're thankful. Now, Father, someone tonight does not know you're in a partner of their sins. Don't let them rest until they come into the full knowledge of who you are. Someone tonight is on the verge of taking their life. We come against the spirit of mental health. The mental illness. That, Father, I even plead the blood. Let your blood be the cover now tonight. We thank you for allowing friendship to be the beacon light. Continue to do the work in us. Continue to do the work through us. And let us be the church that you're calling for in these last and evil days. We give your name glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we say amen. Listen, we love you. And thank you for joining us tonight. Listen, join us this coming Sunday for our virtual uh, worship experience. And it will be our Holy Communion. We want you to dial in, uh, get, your, get your communion together as we take part in the Lord's Supper. The Bible says, as often as you eat and drink. Yeah. So we do this in remembrance of Christ for his... Sh because if there was no shedding of the blood, there would be no remission of the sin from your sin. Listen, we love you tonight. And there's nothing that you can do about it. That we thank God for friendship because our motto is we're not a popular church. But we're a powerful church. We're powerful through our word, our worship, and our evangelism. Because we understand they will not come. They must be brought. Listen, go in peace. God bless you. We'll see you in church. <laughs>